Eight years ago this week, my daughter and I rode in a bicycle event called 24 Hours of Booty, a 24-hour bike race to raise money for cancer. Eighty days later, she died of cancer. I keep in my desk drawer a picture of this. This is the headstone for my mother. She died on July 14, uh, 1953, of cancer. My daughter thought she was a reincarnation of my mother. This week, I got a email from James Barton, and he uh, wanted me to watch a video from Jennifer Doudna and Sid Markarski, um, and it's all about uh, Sid's work on T cell therapy. Then this morning on um, Jane Polly's Sunday morning, there was a show about Sid and his work, and I want to share these things with you because I think this is the most important investment opportunity as well as the best thing that's going to happen in my life. We're going to find a cure for cancer. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. When it comes to investing, I think that I have a advantage, and that is my years. I, I've experienced more. And I quite often think back to the 1980s, the mid-80s to the late 80s, and what if I had gained knowledge about the digital revolution, of the coming of Apple, the coming of Google, the coming of Microsoft? What if I had seen that? And, I, and what if I had Google that I could find it and learn about it and then go buy books and read about it? What if I had done that? And what if I had been a tuned to investing in that sort of thing uh, back in the 80s. What would have happened? Well, we know what would have happened. I have done charts regularly about uh, the growth of um, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and Apple, and how with a little bit of investment, and a lot of knowledge that other people didn't have, how I could have created such a fortune. And so when I then see the next change, the, the change that is being brought about as a result of an event, the event being that of the corona crisis, and and the, the, the move away from health care to health cure. And then if I can identify the companies that are going to come that make that come to fruition, what, what a wonderful investment opportunity. And that was brought, as I said, back to my attention when one of my tribe members, James Barton, uh, cued me into a three-year-old video with Jennifer Doudna and, and Sid Mock. Her G, um, and 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 watching their interview and learning who Sid was and the work he's doing in cell therapy, and then uh, seeing and again be based on James's cue to see uh, the piece that was on. Uh, Sunday morning with Jane Polly, just this Sunday. Here's the intro to it, so you can see it, and I'll put a link to it in the in the bottom, so you can see what this is all about. From Califasane this morning, the story of a small miracle that could make a very big difference. My T cells, part of my immune system, were trained to fight and kill my cancer. Emily Whitehead has a secret weapon those soldiers who went through boot camp, they're still in your body now. Yes, they are, yeah. Patrolling. Yes. <laughs> she was only six when she became the first child ever to receive genetically modified T cells. The experimental treatment cured her leukemia, and the success of her case has allowed all kinds of cellular therapies to be developed. You know, it kind of made me feel like a superhero or something, so. Mm. You're a celebrity here. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> she was treated here at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, eventually. Yes, First, sorry. Emily had chemotherapy at their local hospital. That cures kids with her kind of leukemia 90% of the time. Whenever you're ready. You but Emily relapsed. After a second round, she relapsed right again. Now. She had 22 months of chemotherapy. 22 months of chemotherapy. And she had every off-the-shelf chemotherapy that they could throw at her cancer. Carrie and Tom Whitehead, Emily's parents, watched as these two rival forces, cancer and chemotherapy, attacked their daughter's body. 
Trained as a dietitian, Carrie studied the medical research. Tom relied on his faith and his gut. If they wanted to give her a regimen of chemotherapies, Carrie had researched it and said, you know, that could possibly destroy her kidneys. Then she's going to need a kidney transplant. My inner voice was screaming, don't do that today. The Whiteheads checked their daughter out of the hospital and drove two hours to Philadelphia. We weren't positive we were doing the right thing. We were just trusting our instincts. She was in very, very deep medical trouble. Dr. Siddhartha Mukherjee is a leading cancer specialist and researcher at Columbia University in New York. He's also a Pulitzer Prize winning author. His latest book, published by a division of our parent company, highlights Emily's case, among others. The Children's Hospital of Philadelphia had a program to take these CAR T cells and direct them against the cancer that Emily had. That's CAR hyphen T cells. A T cell normally kills invaders like viruses. These CAR T cells had been modified in a lab to attack Emily's leukemia cells. Now this T cell has a little flag or a harpoon and they grow them in the lab and they grow them to very large numbers and then they infuse them back into, into Emily. The clinical testing had just started. Emily would be the first pediatric case. And you're used to reading studies about these therapies, but for this one, it had never been done. No, I couldn't find really anything on it at all. At first, Emily was doing well, but suddenly. Just the most horrific things you can ever think of. Uh, the ventilators, you know, pounding on her. It would thump in the room to shake stuff loose in her lungs, and there's actually blood coming out of her mouth. She was having multi-organ failure. They were saying to us, it's something really bad's gonna happen soon. Do you want us to stop? I said, don't stop. Now what happened in Emily's case is that there was so much cancer in her body that we build in an amplification signal. So that the, the more they harpoon, the more angry they get. As I said, my daughter died of cancer. And, and if you watch this video that's on the Sunday morning show, they're gonna show you dates. And, and it, it really brought me to tears that I saw that as this young lady as a child was being treated, my daughter was being treated for cancer as well. And she wasn't at the right place at the right time. She didn't go to the right hospital. If she had gone to Children's Hospital potentially in, um, in, in Philadelphia, maybe she would have gotten that treatment. And as Nita and I watched that show, Nita muttered, maybe we didn't do enough. And that's a guilt that we deal with. But I can, can't deal, I can't change that. But I can help other people. And, and I guess that's my objective of this video is, number one, to bring it to your attention that there is work being done to find a cure for cancer and many other diseases. And if you have a child um, who is in a position, be aware of what's going on and reach out and find people who can help you because the work is being done to bring cancer, heart disease, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's to create to make it a thing of the past. So with that in mind, most of these books that I have here are on th that, that subject of, of cancer and genome therapy and genome editing so that I can stay attuned. I have identified a few companies that I think are going to be leaders in this field. Here is a list of them along with their market caps. I'll let you do your research on them and see if you don't agree with me that through genome sequencing and genome editing, that's the bottom two, two are the genome sequencing, that's um, Illumina and Pacific Bioscience. They are the machines that, is go that are going to uh, sequence our genome and then the Editus and, and the Beam and, and Caribou. Those are the companies who are going to at literally take these diseases out of our bodies. Are there others? I am sure there are. And that's why I'm reaching out to you and saying, join our team. Come, come to our Discord. Share your knowledge, particularly if you you're in this field, and, and help us 
help ourselves and our, and our loved ones who are suffering from these diseases, and also will gain some knowledge that we can use uh, for the advantage of our investments, which will benefit our families in the future. The, the companies I'm showing you here are at their low prices. They've been beaten up by the economic crisis that we're going through. So I want you to do your due diligence and you hopefully see that and agree with me and this guy. Oh, I think the biotech revolution is going to be 10 times more important than the digital revolution because it allows us to hack the code of life. That's Walter Isaacson. He's the guy who, who wrote, wrote uh, this book here. Um, the code breaker. This is the Bible of genome sequencing, and it basically traces the lies of Jennifer Doudna, uh, who is, uh, along with Emmanuel de Carpentier, the Nobel Peace Prize winner for, 20, for science in 2020 for her work in CRISPR. I wanted to take just this opportunity, this video, to bring back up the importance of of what's going to happen. Um, I'm not one who believes that there's guidance from somewhere else, and that's why James Barton sent me these two videos so that I could bring it back to the forefront and, and share it with you. But it, it's going to happen. Uh, I hope I live to see it happen, and I hope that some of my friends who are fighting for their children's lives uh, find the cure that, that they're looking for. Uh, God did not give us disease. Our, our ancestors and ourselves created that from the, our environmental exposure, from the, the foods that we take into our body. These are genome deficiencies. It is our job and if you are a strong believer in a God, it is God's guidance that is currently showing us the way to take this out of our bodies so that we can live better, longer, healthier, and more productive lives. That's my video for today, Sunday, and um, I hope it gives you some guidance, some inspiration, and learn more about what it's going to be the health cure revolution.